Thanks, boys. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Josh Ola, and you know me from my videos on Coach's Corner. And as you can see, I am quite literally in a corner. Kind of sad. But anyway, congratulations to the eight teams that have made it this far, that have made it into the playoffs. This is where the action really starts to heat up, as all eight of those teams, they want to stay in that upper bracket. So let's add an incentive. I'll tell you what, on this segment of the show, if we feature teams from that upper bracket, we'll try to focus on what those teams are doing right, rather than what they're doing wrong. Notice though, I said try. Because let's face it, all the teams that have made it this far, they've got to be doing something right. And it's my job as the coach to find out what that is. So. Let's get into it. We're going to be taking a look now at our first matchup in the playoffs. This is between our second seeded Triple BG and the seventh seeded Fartiria Motives. So while there is a, a big seeded gap between these two teams, the first time that they met, the matchup was actually quite close. Triple BG was able to come out ahead 2-1 to one in that series, but it was very tight. So we're going to look at what Fartiria Motives can do to make sure history does not repeat itself. Let's start there. To start, we're going to take a look at some stats from Fartiria Motive. Stats can really help us to figure out the identity of a team. And for this team, it seems to be a defensive one. They finished second in the standings with 80 saves. That's quite a few. And they also had 10 more than the place in third. So they were up there with a lot of saves. They also, which was nice to see, were able to split those saves pretty evenly across their whole team. We have the Gamers Web coming in first there with 33. The Gritty Committee following close behind with 31. And very nicely, Seeing Unseen get involved with 16 saves. So that's awesome to see them working together as a team to make those defensive stops. A really good example of how they've been able to make those saves came in their matchup against 8th Protocol. And that was the game where it went into a really late overtime. So let's take a look at that now. It was one of the best and most important in the round robin, as the losers would likely have ended up playing in the elimination matchup. Game 2 ended up going to an epic 2 minute and 44 second overtime. As you can see from these clips, Fartiria Motive's defense was holding the whole way. Now as we can see from the stats at the end of the game, even though they were outshot 11-8, to eight, three more shots for 8th Protocol, they were able to hold with their defense. Everybody on the team getting involved with two saves, and they were able to come away with that critical win. Now let's zone in on some things that Fartiria Motives is doing really well on defense. And that comes along with their saves. It's their utilization of that backboard, that back wall above the net. So we're going to take a look at that. We're also going to have a little advice of what they might need to be careful of while they're making those plays. So pay close attention. You just might learn something. Okay, so we're going to be taking a look at Gritty. The gritty committee in this replay here we see gritty nicely positioned in goal not too far out of goal pointing across the field towards the ball nice behind that goal line i like that positioning and we see unseen pushing up the field to go and put a challenge on it so gritty goes to go forward a little bit but now he sees uh, because unseen didn't cut right for the ball but went for boost that he's likely going to get beat to the ball so he hesitates a little bit which is good because um, that's what happens and then we see the ball get bounced off the wall and because gritty was patient he's now in position to make a clear and a save across the field but what we're going to see him doing next if we stop the camera right here this is what we're really looking at talking about using that wall for our save so what gritty's done already is good but this is really good he can see that both of his teammates if we look here gamers web He's on the ground. He can't go on the wall. And Unseen is on that backside, probably going to rotate back post. So what, what can Gritty do here to make himself useful? If he rotates front post, the ball is just going to get hit above him. He's just going to be in the way. He might even bump his teammates. So the play here, which Gritty realizes, 
is to utilize the wall. So if we roll it here, we can see Gritty drives up the wall and he's able to get a nice clear on the ball to put it off a goal. Because if not, that would have bounced down right in front of their goal, clears it off to the side and is able to keep going with the play. So that was a really good clip of utilizing that backboard um, to get a save and to make sure we're not all crammed up just in the front of goal and on the goal line, but to use the, the whole field, the whole arena to make those saves. All right, so let's look at another good utilization of that backboard, that wall. So here we're going to be watching the gamer's web. So take note of our, our positioning on a face-off. This is really important. I think we don't pay attention to this enough. This will come into play. We can see Unseen's over on the right, Gritty Committee on the left, and gamer's web. He's going to follow up through the middle of the field. So remember, Unseen is off to the right, so we know he's on that back right side of the field right now, getting that boost. So when the ball breaks here far to the left, we know that Unseen is still back far right. So this is our ball. So we need to put pressure on this. And, and the gamer's web recognizes the need to put a challenge on this ball. So he wisely rotates back and grabs boost. But he doesn't make the mistake of cutting and rotating back to goal. Even though this ball looks slightly awkward with cookies going to put some pressure on it. This would be the wrong thing to do because, again, we know that we have Unseen on that backside and even Gritty. He's, we can't see him anymore, so he's rotating around on that side of the field as well. So this is the right choice. And what do we do? We go up the wall, and I really like this right here. So we could just go hard on this ball and try to make a challenge, get that out of here and clear it. But I really like this kind of fake challenge, and then Gamer's Web turns back away from the ball. Cookies just kind of takes a hit, and then uh, the Gamer's Web is in a really posi good position to take that clear uh, across the top of net and then have a chance to follow up that ball when he lands. So, again, that's really smart utilization of that backboard to help our teammates out when those high backboard passes are coming in. So, really well done. In this clip here, we're going to be looking at Gamer's Web again, and we're going to see another good example of utilizing the back wall, but also the danger that it can pose to a team if it's not really communicated well. Um, as when you go on that back wall, sometimes you are cutting rotations to play that position and your teammates can lose sight of you. So we're going to see how that develops here. We can see Polar Bear. He's got control of the ball. He's dribbling it across the field towards the wall. The Gamer's Web goes up to put a little bit of a challenge on him. He peels back. I like this. He plays it patiently. He goes up the back wall to prevent that uh, backboard pass from coming out in case Polar Bear keeps it really high. But as we see, this isn't what happens. It starts to go really low. Polar Bear's lost track of it. And if we jump out of our cam here, if we were paying attention to our positioning of our teammates as this play was developing, which we seem to have lost a little bit as Gamers Web, we had two players lower down playing our goal. So this is a situation where our comms broke down a little bit. We need to make sure to communicate who had this ball and, and really it shouldn't ever be Gamers Web's ball now that the ball is going low. Um, so if we watch the replay, we can see Gamers Web unfortunately gets a small chip off of it. Gritty commits, Unseen commits. Likely one of them has the save um, based on their positioning, and then we end up getting counter gold. So it, it was a good example of, of right positioning to use the wall, that backboard, in case it goes high. We're covering all those aspects uh, on the field, taking away opportunities, but we just have to use a little bit better judgment to discern when and when we shouldn't go for those challenges and what the position of our teammates might be in goal. It's awesome to see Farterior Motives using whatever part of the arena is necessary to make those saves. So now that we've talked about what they're doing good, and even how they can keep improving that skill, we're going to focus in on what they need to do to win. And this is actually reflected in what we've just been talking about, their ability to make saves. Usually, if as a team you have a lot of saves on your stats, that means you're letting a lot of shots come onto your net. So what can they do to change that? Well, they want to make sure to get up in the face of those people who are taking the shots. Make sure that they're challenged so they don't have a free shot on net or are able to take that quality shot and place it where they want. They need to be challenging, and that can come back to their communication and their rotation. So they want to keep that really clean, keep those shots down, and maybe they won't have to make as many saves. I think that if they can correct that, 
and keep making those tough saves, they'll have a good chance to take this series. Now let's jump over and take a look at Triple BG. Again, the stats seem to show a clear identity for this team, which is good team play. So let's just bring those up. Triple BG finished in first place with 41 assists. That's about 1.71 assists per game. That's quite a few, getting close to two. Josh Olo or myself finished in first with 18 of those assists. And my teammate Crow tied for second with 17. So let's break this down a little bit more. If we look at some more statistics, we can see that out of the 64 goals that Triple BG got, 41 of them came off of assists. That means that 62% of Triple BG's goals come off of some kind of pass or team challenge. How does this stack up against some of the other top teams? Is 62% really that good? Well, let's take a look. If we look at the other teams in the top four, we can see Balls of Fury came in second with about 53% of their goals coming off of assists. Miracle Whiff came in third with 52% and Snap Crackle Pop with 45%. So if we, we can see then that Triple BG with their 62%, that's 9% more than that team that came in second place. So what's helped Triple BG to be so effective in their passing? Well, it's nothing fancy, really. They're simply believing in the pass. Well, what does that mean? Take a look. Well, it doesn't mean overcommitting on the ball. It doesn't mean pre-jumping from midfield. It also doesn't mean ignoring the defenders in net. As we can see from all these clips, those things don't work out so well. What it does mean is believing that your teammate can get the pass to you. And because of that belief, you'll stick close as the second man so that you can support him and take the shot. So now we're going to take a look at a few clips and how Triple BG has excelled in this. Also though, how they can keep improving. And as I said, it's nothing fancy. But let's see if we can learn something. First of all, we're going to take a look at a good example of believing in the pass. And not only that, but understanding where the pass will be coming from, what the most optimal place to, to put it is, and also in supporting our teammate and reading the defense. So good play all around. So let's roll it here. We're going to see Crow challenging the ball. So he goes in, gets a favorable challenge that breaks off to the right. Josh Ola comes rushing in on the right-hand side of the field, calls Crow off, and Crow wisely turns back upfield to support the play. Now, if we stop and think about this, as far as the pass is concerned, we can see where everyone is. If this shot is placed uh, too far across the field, so if the shot comes in and hits the wall here and bounces out, it's likely it's going to get saved or cleared um, because it's going to be too far away from the teammate that's over here. And... Uh, it's just going to be easy to clear if it's out in front of goal here. Also, if it's put too high, it's going to take too long. And we need to consider how much time is on the clock. So the most effective pass is going to come off the wall and bounce out. That way, it's not going to give the team a chance to break on the ball. And it'll likely end up going over Polar Bear's head. He won't be able to cut out field and, and get it that quickly. So let's jump back here to Crow. So just a sec. So here, Crow reads that. He's nice and tight for that pass. It's going to come off the wall, and it does. It gets a nice little bounce. And as we can see, Polar Bear, he can't turn it on this ball. And I write since, even though she's in good position, it's far enough away from that goal line that she can't break on it in time. So Crow's in a really good position, up nice and tight. And that way he can break on this ball, and he can score a goal. In this clip, we're going to see a good example of, again, believing in the pass and supporting our teammates so that that pass can even be possible. So let's watch this. This is Josh Ola. He's rotating out of goal. Crow has a play on the ball. He puts that field a little bit. So we try to close the gap as fast as we can here um, so that we can follow this up and support our teammate. We're not going really wide across the field waiting for a pass. So we, we rush up. Crow slows it down. 
And here he gets a slight flick on the ball. And because we played so tight, because we can, like our teammate, we have a third person back. So we don't have to overly worry here. And remember, believing in the ball or believing in the pass doesn't mean over committing and jumping at this ball if it's not going to be there. You know, if this wasn't there, we just simply rotate out and go back to goal. So that's not what it means. But we've played tight and now the opportunities presented ourselves. And since we played in the right position, we are there to follow this up get a shot and put it over the defense where if we were wider across the field or we weren't playing as tight that opportunity would never present itself so remember support that person who's got the ball so that we can quickly follow up and get those passes in this clip we're going to see everyone on triple bg get involved in taking a pass taking the shot and we're going to look at one of the most critical things to do if we want our pass to be successful. And that's rotating out of the play after we pass the ball so that our teammates can take subsequent passes or shots on it. We're still going to see a good example of that and also a not as good example of that. So we're going to roll it here. So the ball is rolling towards Josh Ola and we're going to chip it up here. Go up to follow the ball, try to get a pass off of it, take a shot if we can. It gets blocked by a nice save. So now we're going to jump over to Crow in a second here. But first we're going to notice what Josh Ola does. Immediately after he lands, he starts rotating out. Now we see that we could turn. We could think, oh yeah, you know, I grabbed that little boost pad that's right there. And uh, maybe I turn back in on the play to see what happens after Crow gets it. But... When we turn back on plays, it'll often hold off teammates who are further down the field who could take a better shot. So the smartest thing to do here is to rotate out and become that third man so that Crow feels confident and free to take his shot and that even Talf afterwards can come in and take his shot. That's a, a good team play. So let's see. Josh Ola, we rotate out. We go far. Then we switch our ball cam back so we can get a good view on the play. And then if we just jump back, we'll jump over to Crow's cam here. We see Crow. He comes up the field. He supports. He goes up. He's able to get it over with a nice little pass again. But we're going to see a not as good example of rotating out. So as soon as Crow rotates out here, I know that ball is tantalizing, but if you could just hear it, we just heard somebody behind us jump, which based on positioning, it makes sense that it would be Talf coming in. So it makes sense for a Crow here to rotate out and grab that boost and let Talf take a shot. Um, we're going to see now as we watch replay, that doesn't quite happen, but it's still successful. But it causes Talf to get pushed a little high and that, that shot to almost go askew. So it was a good example, again, of passing everybody on the team getting involved. But one of those keys is making sure we rotate out of the play um, so everybody on the team can get a good chance on the ball. Once again, we've highlighted what this team is doing good. Also, how they can improve that skill some more. And now we're going to take a look at what they need to do to try to get the win in the series this evening. Here's an interesting statistic, something that they need to watch out for. Five out of eight of Triple BG's losses have come in game three. That means they tend to start off hot, but then they cool down as the series goes on. And so that's becoming even more critical now with the series getting longer, becoming best of fives. So Triple BG need to watch out for that, that they play a whole series and play consistently throughout. I think that if they can do that, if they can start off hot and keep that momentum, they have a very good chance to take the series against Farterior Motives. All right, everyone. Thanks for tuning in again. My name is Josh Ola, and I would love to stay and break down some more clips and talk about some more stats, but I've got a series to go win. So to give me a chance to get warmed up, take a look at some of the bloopers from this week's show, and then we'll send it back over to the boys on the desk, and I'll see you on the field. This is going to be between Triple BG, our second seeded team, and Farterior Motives, which is our third... This is between Triple BG and the. Let's try that again.
we are going to be taking a look at our first matchup on the Friday night show uh, in the playoffs. Usually, if you have a lot of saves, that also means you're letting a lot of shets. Now let's zone in on some things that Farteria Motive is doing really We're going to be taking a look at our first 